I have a beautiful fall themed card to share with you today, and I think I have something that I may have invented. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today I'm sharing a card project featuring some new products that were sent to me from Waffle Flower Crafts. And in order to isolate the stencil areas that I'm going to use, I created some acetate cropping squares. Now, I don't know if anyone else is doing this. They may be. And so just let me have my split second of thinking, wow, I had a good idea, but it is a good idea and it's really inexpensive and you can make these at home. So to see my eh, fancy invention, not so fancy invention and my gorgeous card. Can I say that about my own cards? I can. I'm pretty sure I can stick around. It's coming up next. Here's a look at the products I'm going to use today to create a really simple stencil design. I have this beautiful fall leaves stencil background from Waffle Flower, and that is just super all purpose. We're going to be isolating and blending some colors today. And then I also have this big, beautiful give thanks die. So I pulled some colors from Concord and Night that, that I thought was just obviously fall. I'm not trying to create a new fall palette. I want to go with this really nice hues of falling leaves and that's what we're going to do to get started. So let me get some paper, get my grip mat and we'll get set up for blending. So next I'm going to take my cardstock. This is some Concord and Ninth white cardstock and then I'm just going to line this up with the etching on the stencil. Oh, I missed it there a little. <laughs> then I can't get it up. Jewels, not tools. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We got it. Highly trained professional. Okay. Let's try that again where we line it up right on the line and drop. Okay. There we go. Then we seal it, right? We seal in the goodness, push it and we're all sealed in and ready to blend. Now, I don't know if other people have done this, but I, I decided because you can use acetate, I decided to make, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but I'll see if I can show it on this really dirty cloth uh, that doesn't show up. I made acetate cropping squares. And what the idea is here, when you bring them together, right, you can isolate pretty much any little space that you like. I just took a four, four inch square of regular acetate and crop or cut them, but with scissors. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do because what's kind of cool is here you can isolate, right? Press down there. You can press down here. Again, you've got enough space to just use the mat and then you can use any blending brush you have. I'm going to use all my waffle flower brushes today to bring in the color and the other areas are protected. So I'm going to use Concord and Night Inks. I'm going to put on some music and speed this up and we will fill this lovely panel with fall colors. So hopefully that shows you how these little slide slide croppers work. I think making them even larger would be better because then you know you can always stick to the outside. So I would say try doing a five and a half inch acetate square and give it a try. Um, I think this is kind of a fun little thing. And I've just been cleaning in between with alcohol. Just give the stencils a spritz 
and you can get the ink off really quick and then they will be dry for the next usage. So we'll just wipe those off with the alcohol and if the washi tape comes off over time, I can just replace, but I just wanted to be able to see them and I'm gonna keep these with my grip mats now for something to use that is really small and functional. Okay, next I'm going to peel and reveal, then I'm going to clean this stencil because I think I'm gonna dry emboss this pattern onto the cardstock because why not? So now we lift and look at that beautiful fall collection of leaves. Let me get this cleaned and then I'll get my die cut machine so that I can dry emboss. I am gonna trim this panel down before I do the fun thing that I'm going to do, which is dry emboss, because I don't wanna lose any of the details. So I'm gonna use, eh, let's, I think I'm gonna just trim it a little. I'm gonna use one of my Waffle Flower A2 Layers dies, my most used dies in all the land. And I'm telling you, this, it really is, I, I really do use these pretty much uh, more than anything else. And I wanna make sure that my give thanks is going to still fit. I'm not cutting that. I don't even know why I just put that down because it's magnetic. Um, come on, get up. Yeah. Well, there you go. I don't wanna scrape anything. I think that'll be good, right? Cause this'll still fit. I may not be using the shadow layer with this. I, I haven't decided but I wanna cut this first so that I have a nice clean cut for dry embossing. Let me run this through my die cut machine. And I am going to show you the sandwich that I am using in my Anna Griffin Impress machine for dry embossing because dry embossing is such an easy way to add a little bit of texture and interest and I love doing it. So here's here's the sandwich. You, you're going to need an embossing pad. And for your, oh, that's making too much noise. You go over there. And for your machine, it could differ, but I'm gonna be using one clear plate, the metal shim. Then we use the, is it MOOPS? The MOOPS uh, formula, which simply stands for matte paper stencil. So you go with your mat and sometimes you want to practice this or figure out what is going to be the best for your machine because there's nothing like, you know, messing it all up once you've done it. But then all you need to do here is just line up your shapes. And I think, I think that looks good. I don't think I can do any better. I am going to put a piece of tape on here so that static when I put my plate down doesn't do anything wonky and then I'm going to put my clear plate on top and I'm going to run this through. Oh, it shifted a little. Oh shoot, the whole thing shifted. But you know what? I think that's funky and chic. It shifted and I'll show you here. I wonder, I think I should have taped it down because this is the texture that you get and you can see it and you can feel it. Now this is a little off but it actually looks kind of cool because it's offset. So that's an oops that I have legitimately no issue with. Note to self, make sure you hold them together and tape both. I think I was, I think it slipped because I didn't tape top and bottom, but I think that looks cool anyway. So I'm going to cut my greeting and we're gonna add a little shine and finish out the card. Before I cut out the greeting, I'm gonna add a little bit of Bruce Monroe aqua pigment in the gilded. I have been loving doing this lately. It is just such a fun way to add gold, little splatters, spatters, whatever you want to call them, to your paper. And it's super fun. And I love it. It's just got the nicest shine. I like to wet down my brush just a little bit. And here's what we're going to do. We'll just pick it up like that, get the bristles in. I like to do the big blobbies first, and then we just add to our card. I like my fan brush for this. I think it gives really nice little spatters, but honestly, any brush you have will do. Nothing fancy required. I just wanted a little extra shine all over the panel. And then while this is drying, I'll work on my greeting. You can also go like that too. I just, I try various techniques, but I think this will be beautiful. And when this dries, it will be 
shiny and lovely. All right, moving on to the greeting. So I went ahead and cut out two white layers and one from some matte gold metallic. And I wanna show you something here. Sometimes if the pressure on your machine is too strong, you know how you'll get your little, your little dots. And if you're careful, I, with a Teflon bone folder, sometimes I just sort of rub over mine. And what it does is it just kind of flattens them a bit and makes them a little less obtrusive and they don't catch the shine as much. I don't mind the look of them, but sometimes when I have the time, which, you know, let's be real, I'm not like a speed crafter. If you have a Teflon bone folder, you can just kind of go over them a little. It's not gonna hurt the surface of your metallic paper. You know, it's a little here and there. You don't have to do it, but I think the pressure on my Impress die cut machine is pretty powerful. And uh, so sometimes I do this. I don't think people notice and say, um, I'd like to send the card back because I don't like your dots. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna grab some liquid glue here. This is my Gina K Connect glue. And I'll go ahead and put glue on all of these layers, glue them together, and just let that adhere for a few minutes. So now that this is dry, look at the shine, how the, how the, that's the glow and the shine. And it's all over, but it does show up really beautifully on the leaves. And here I have glued together one of the matte gold layers with two of white layers. And I think that's so pretty. I actually could go this way too. In fact, you know what, now that I'm looking at it, I'm going to cut out a shadow layer just to see how it looks. Hold tight. I actually think that looks nice. And if I do, well, maybe I'll do two layers of the greeting. That way it'll be substantial, but I still might put foam tape underneath it as well. So let me glue these together and glue this on top and then we'll prep our note card. So I'm going to put this on a piece of cayenne cardstock because look at how pretty that will be. Isn't that gorgeous? I do love the coordinating colors of the inks and the cardstocks. So we're gonna score this at four and a quarter. So this is eight and a half by five and a half. And we'll fold that down. Well, this just is oozing fall. And let me tell you, I uh, live in Minnesota and uh, fall is uh, taking its time. It's taking its time to get here. We, we're tired of the 80 degree and upper 80 days. All right, I've got my Alta New foam tape here on the back. And again, the texture on this is really pretty subtle, but I think the offset is cute. So remember when you make an oops, and I don't even, I'll zoom in at the end so you can see it. I don't think it really matters, um, or at least you can try to figure out a way to use it, right? Use it, don't lose it. All right, I'm gonna stand up, forgive my head if it gets in the way a little. I just wanna frame this very nicely on the Cayenne cardstock card. Ooh, so fun. All right, and now I've got I did put foam on the back because I do, one of the things I love that you get from a foam square is a little cast of a shadow. Now, my hope is that my recipient will keep this forever, never and ever and never get rid of it. Not because, not because I need them to, I just want them to, you know, it's not a need, it's just a hope. I keep all the cards that are sent to me. I am going to do the liquid glue again. Let me grab this in an appropriate area because I, I wanna have a little float time before I commit. And so I take just a little bead on each foam square. Just gives you that tiny float before you have to say, are we good? Are we golden? I'll bring my T square in. And honestly, this is so easy to visually center. I don't, I'm not too worried about that. Let's see, side to side, top to bottom. I'm visualizing, I'm looking at my monitor and we drop, oh, so cute. We line up the base right there. And I think we are nicely centered, all right. 
Mm, so cute. Pop this on, let that adhere. To finish this off, I just have three gatherings of some gold foil pearls, which I think look nice here on the card and kind of tucking them into sort of those spaces that seem like a natural fit. And one, two, three gives us a nice little triangular connection. So let's add our pearls and pick you up a little bit of glue Boop. and just drop it down. There we go. Boop. And even if you can see a little of that glue, it's okay because it'll dry clear. Boop. Just want to make sure they are held in place. And the, the uh, dry embossing doesn't really affect. It's not that deep. It's just a textural thing. Boop. So I think it's going to be great. All right, one more and boop. And that is my finished card project. I wanted to do, zoom in a little here. Hopefully I can catch the light. You can see the dry embossing texture that shows up in there. And again, it's okay that it's offset. I also love the gold spatter that's on here. It adds just a little extra shine to the piece. And uh, I want to give thanks for a fun stencil. And where's my, where's my cool new cropping tool? I don't know where they went, but I was going to say, I want to give thanks to me. So that isn't that what Snoop Dogg does? He says, I want to give thanks to me. You want to give thanks to me for a uh, little cropping square. So if you try this, it's super easy to make your own. You could even do them in paper, but the problem is they're hard to clean. So grab some acetate, but make them bigger. Even do a six inch square. Then you know you're going to stretch. If you use the grip mat technique, you're going to have enough room to be able to stick to your mat. You can find links to all of the products I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you. So hit that subscribe button and be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next time I post. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. To see more cards created with Waffle Flower products, check out the two thumbnails I have linked for you below and I'll see you in those videos.